Pokemon Emerald with only one Pikachu went surprisingly smoothly, so let's go for an even more fragile Pokemon. Today's the day that we figure out, would I be able to beat Pokemon Fire Red with a team of only one Paris? Paris has a lot working against it. Only 285 base stats, even lower than a Pikachu, with its only decent stat being attack. Problem is, its moveset doesn't complement that at all. In Gen 3, grass moves were all special, and the only bug move that it can learn is the incredibly weak Leech Life. Speaking of its type, Grass and Bug is an awful type combo that leaves it with 6 weaknesses, most notably being double weak to fire and flying. Flying is a really common type to fight, so being double weak against it is brutal. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all of this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I'm iffy on this. Slash can probably get me far, but how am I supposed to beat Charizard? Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use Paris. I'll need other Pokemon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokemon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeballs, and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, thanks to WoW Such Gaming for recommending this. Let's do this. So right off the bat, I use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Bulbasaur with Paris so that we can do the whole run with it and so our rival will use the hardest starter for us to fight. I named mine Twitter. Fun, but ultimately useless. Ours is quirky nature, so neutral stat gains. Our ability is effect spore, so every time we get hit with a physical move, there's a 10% chance that the opponent will either get poisoned, paralyzed, or put to sleep. Considering how fragile we are, the ability isn't great. Also, that's not 10% per status affliction, that's 10% for anything to happen. So each individual one has like 3.34% chance, something like that. So while I start getting some levels in Viridian Forest, let's take a look at that move list again. We've got a strange problem. We're a grass type, but Brock's Rock Gym is actually an issue. We don't get an attacking grass move until we're level 43, so that's not going to happen. What we're probably going to have to rely on is Poison Powder to start taking down their health, and then leech life just to attempt to survive long enough for the poison to take them out. It's rough, but we've for sure done worse before. At level 14 I attempt Brock, knowing I'd lose, but I just wanted to see how well we match up. We did shockingly well against Geodude due to him mostly just using Defense Curl, but what surprised me was Onyx. Normally Brock doesn't do super effective moves, even if he can, unless you're already doomed anyway, just to make the AI take it easy on you in the first gym, but he went for Rock Tomb right away and ended us. So, it's back to grinding. One thing that really slows this down is that you don't get running shoes until after the first gym, so it actually takes a while just to run into encounters. Naturally, everything here gives pretty low amounts of experience, what with it mostly being first form bugs. Paris is considered a medium fast leveling Pokemon, so it's slow, but the finish line is in sight. At level 19, we learn Leech Life and try again. Shockingly, it goes incredibly well. I thought I'd need a few more levels, but Leech Life is actually doing decent damage considering the circumstances, and Onyx never attempted Rock Tomb, so we win with plenty of health to spare. The trainers in the next area are pretty easy even though our levels aren't really far apart. Right now we're in the interesting period of the run where our highish attack stat is carrying us through fights. I predict this will wear off right before we learn Slash, come back right when we get it, and then run out again around Silphco. Let's see how well our theory holds up in the next rival fight. On our way though, I took the Helix Fossil. I knew that if I didn't say what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. You know, this has been so ingrained in people's minds that I went to an Austin John stream recently and he was able to recite that at me. God, I love my job. Rival time. First is Pidgeotto, and now that we have Spore, a 100 accuracy sleep move is not horrible. We get sand attacked and lose half our health to Gust, but we take it out. We get quickly ended by Charmander though. Two Pokemon that are double super effective in a row? Let's try Misty instead. First is Staryu and it's shockingly easy. I put it to sleep with Spore after taking a little bit of damage from Water Pulse and then take it out with Scratch. Starmie hits Swift once, but I put it to sleep and since it's part Psychic, I use Leech Life to heal up and do decent damage. Easy fight? I do have to grind more though. It's gonna take a while, but I need Slash to progress. It should be enough to one-shot Pidgeotto and Charmander. Even if it's not, maybe at level 31 I'll be fast enough to put them to sleep right away. At level 29, I decide to try again just in case, and it goes great. Two scratches for Pidgeotto, Spore and two scratches for Charmander, Abra can't fight back, and one scratch for Rotata. I really didn't think a few levels would make that big of a difference. After this, I find every last trainer I can and get battling. 
I might not need these levels right away, but I know that a Charizard is waiting for me at the end of the game, and if I'm not either fast enough to put him to sleep, or strong enough to beat him in one crit, I lose. I fully believe that this run is going to end with a massive grind before the final fight. So let's get some of that grind out of the way now. Rival time and it goes about as well as you'd expect. One shot on Pidgeotto, almost a one shot on Charmeleon, but he used smoke screen. One shot on Raticate, and Kadabra hung on by lowering my accuracy, but he never hurt me, so we win. Trash can puzzle goes easily in under a minute, so clearly this is a good omen for the run. The electric gym battle was pretty easy as usual, with no one doing any serious damage. It helps that we're part grass type though, so they probably didn't want to use any of their good moves. Rock Tunnel was awful as usual. Navigation isn't too bad, just because I've done this so many times, but there are tons of mandatory trainers with harder to deal with Pokemon like Rock types. I can't just brute force my way through though like everything else. Instead, I use Sport to put them to sleep and then fight them, since some of the Geodudes know self-destruct. Also, when What a Geek was reviewing this script, he pointed out I could have just learned Dig. Whoops. On the other side, I figured it's worth taking an early shot at the rival battle in Pokemon Tower just to see how well I match up. Our stats aren't great, but 83 attack is pretty high for this point in the game, and Slash is a decent move due to the high crit chance. Notice that I have extra uses of Slash? That's because I caught a team of Meowths. I can't use them in combat, but their pickup ability will occasionally pick up useful things like power point ups and rare candies to help speed up the challenge. Rival time, and it goes great. This will give us an idea of how well we match up in the future. Pidgeotto is always a threat due to his flying moves, but Spore and Slash will probably always beat him. Charmeleon is the real beast of the team. He's reasonably easy now, but once he evolves, I think he'll be a problem. Execute is Grass and Psychic, so he's double weak to bug moves. Leech Life might be weak, but between the same type attack bonus and 4 times damage, Execute is just going to be a free heal for us. Kadabra is strong and fast, but physically frail, so I doubt he'll be that bad even when he evolves. Last is Gyarados, who drops our attack due to Intimidate. This is bad and will for sure always be a thorn in our side in the future fights. This one went well though. Giovanni and the Rocket Hideout was something that I had worried about, but now that we have Giga Drain, rock types aren't such an issue anymore, so he went down fast, getting us the Sylph Scope. Before I finish Pokemon Tower though, I decided to go do the Erica Grass Gym while I'm in town. I figure Spore and Slash would be enough to deal with her since we resist grass anyway. And as expected, she goes down easily. The most her team manages to do is poison us, but it's not even toxic, so we're fine. I predict that the next gym though, Koga's Poison Gym, that might be a pretty hard one. Pokemon Tower is annoying to go through because Slash can't hit ghosts and Leech Life doesn't do much, so I have to use Giga Drain, a move with almost no power points. Nothing here is really a threat, but it takes a lot longer than I had hoped. I decided to take an early shot at Koga, even though I doubt I'd win. It starts strong with our Spore and Slash combo dealing with coughing, but I was almost ready to take out Muck. He woke up, hit Sludge, did massive damage and poisoned us. Then he started using Hyper Potions and we quickly fell apart. We may deal a lot of damage, but we're still pretty fragile. I could probably win this fight with better sleep luck, but I decided to go to Sylphco instead and just get some levels on trainers. Plus, maybe we're ready for the rival fight there. While I'm there, I try fighting the rival, but it's not even close. We've got a speed tie on Pidgeot, and Wing Attack does more than half our health and damage. Plus, he has Feather Dance to ruin our attack stat. We're not ready for him yet. I'm getting pretty desperate for levels at this point, so I start hunting down every last trainer that I can on routes that you don't have to go to normally. Either beating Koga or our rival would lead to progress, so no matter what, I need to be strong enough to beat one of them. Although I think that's obvious that we stand a better chance against Koga. Spore, a little crit luck, and maybe a little sleep luck should be all it takes once we have enough attack power. At level 60, I try Koga again. Coughing went down easily with Spore and Slash, even with his Hyper Potions, and Muck fell to the same combo. The third Coughing could have had a chance of hitting me, but Koga wasted his turn using a full heal, even though I'm faster than him with a 100 accuracy sleep move, so that gave him no advantage. Finally, Weezing was out, and Spore and Slash combo worked again. Very easy victory. Now that we can go to Cinnabar Island, I can take a try at the Fire Gym. But first though, I go to the lab so we can finally figure out what the Helix Fossil turns into. Make your guess on what it'll be. It's an Omanyte. Here to tell you to follow me on Twitter. The trainers in the Fire Gym aren't too bad to deal with overall, but any fire moves that do hit do massive damage. I need the experience though, so I make sure to fight all of them. Time for Blaine. Growlithe, oh my god. Did you guys know that I once had a Wikipedia page and all it said was MDB never learned how to read? Apparently I never learned how to spell either. Growlithe is first, so we lose some attack power to intimidate. Bad start. 
Sporn Slash manages to take him out fast though, as does the same combo with Ponyta. Rapidash is out though, is faster than us, and one-shots us from full health with Fire Blast. Alright, we're gonna need to level up and get faster. A handful of trainer battles later and I try the rival fight again. Pidgeot goes great with me being faster than him, but Charizard one-shots me with a flamethrower, even while being 25 levels lower than me, and he's faster than me. This is bad. Is back to the grind. I mostly just use the Versus Seeker on these trainers on the north end of Cycling Road. It's been a while since I did a challenge where I have a really powerful attack combo like Spore and Slash, and yet I'm constantly getting brick walled due to being too slow and too fragile to deal with anything. This challenge had a slow start, lightning fast middle, and the late game is looking brutally slow again. By the way, quick note that'll be interested to those of you who watch my Pokemon challenges, since you're watching my Pokemon challenges. My friend Brandon is doing some Pokemon challenges again. You can find those as well as his Fallout challenges on his new channel, Gooset. You can find a link to that in the description. His newest Pokemon challenge was way harder than my Gen 2 baby challenge, because it's Pokemon Gold with only one Pichu. Check it out. I try again at level 70 and I'm still slower than him and get one shot, even with a level 30 lead on him. Finally, at level 75, we have a speed tie with Charizard, and through luck, we manage to get the first attack in the fight so Spore puts him to sleep and I'm able to take him out with slashes. The rest of his team didn't give us any issues, but that was a brutal fight. I'm sure he'll brick wall us even harder after the 8th gym as well. Speaking of the 8th gym, the Silph Co. Giovanni fight is next. Nidorino is first and he goes down in one slash. His poison point ability leaves us poisoned, though. This is bad. Rhyhorn is an easy one shot with Giga Drain, so at least we're keeping our health up. Nidoqueen is third and slash hits hard. I try Giga Drain to stay healthy, but she hangs on and tail whips us before I finish her off. Last is Genghis Khan, who flinches us with a fake out, as our health keeps getting very low. I put her to sleep and go for Giga Drain just to keep from fainting. Genghis Khan wakes up, hits Rage, but it's super weak and I finish her off. That was close. Finally, we can do the Psychic Gym, but it's completely one-sided. Psychic Pokemon tend to be physically frail, and our attack stat is decent, we're part bug type, and bug is physical in Gen 3, so despite Leech Life's 20 power, it does a lot of damage. That means we finally have to beat Blaine, though. Growlithe goes fine and Ponyta hangs on from Slash, but misses Fire Blast, then takes a couple of Hyper Potions before going down. Finally, it's Rapidash again, and it's faster, hits a Fire Blast, and I survive with only 6 health. I put her to sleep in Slash, but he uses a full heal. Thankfully, it turns out we actually had a speed tie, and I got the first attack on the following round, so I finished her. Last is RK9, so my attack is down yet again, but I put him to sleep. Slash is doing very little. I need a crit. I bring him all the way into red health, then he finishes us with a bite. We need just a little more power. I try again at level 80. Growlithe is a one-shot and Ponyta somehow hung on, missed a fire blast, then about 1000 hyper potions later I take him out. Rapidash is slower than us now so I have a real easy time taking him out with Spore and Slash. Finally it's RK9 and he never wakes up before I can take him out. Well, that went a lot better. Finally with that done we can move on to the final gym. His two opening Rhyhorns were one-shots with Giga Drain, Nidoqueen goes down to Slashes while she was asleep, Nido King goes down to slashes while Giovanni was using a dozen items, although I did get poison from Poison Point in the process. And lastly, Doug Trio was a one shot with Giga Drain after he hit us with a weak slash. That was about as smooth as I predicted. Even with the final gym, though, we can't move on yet because there's another rival fight, and to cut to the chase, we got one shotted by Flamethrower with a Charizard who's faster than me. I'm sure you saw that coming. Considering Flamethrower's 100 accuracy and he's faster than me in one shotting me, I think it's obvious at this point that I'll need to get to level 100 to stand a chance since I'll have to fight him again as the final boss. I go around the map grabbing every last rare candy that I can to save on time and knock out just a few more levels on the cycling road. It takes an eternity, but eventually, I get to level 100. Here's our stats. It's overall okay, but I'm really worried about the low speed. It might end up dooming us in the Pokemon Champion fight as I bet Charizard could still one-shot us. Rival time. Pidgeotto goes down in one non-critical slash, so you know we can still hit hard. Rhyhorn goes down in one Giga Drain and is Charizard time. He is still faster than me and Flamethrower takes me down to only 5 health, with me being 47 levels higher than him. 
I've done like 30 of these challenges and I've never seen it be this one-sided against me. My God, I put him to sleep and slash him down, but this is bad. Execute gives me a chance to heal by beating him with Leech Life. Alakazam is next and he's faster, so he disabled Leech Life and hit me with Psychic, bringing me down to 13 health before I could finish him with Slash. Last is Gyarados, so my attack is down from Intimidate. I managed to put him to sleep and Giga Drain him until he faints, giving us a pretty hollow victory. Alright, so the game is probably unwinnable with the current strategy since Charizard would for sure outspeed me and one-shot me in the final battle. So I track down a Quick Claw. This is a held item that gives us a 20% chance to act first if we normally wouldn't. 20% is really low, but at least it's something. With that done, one last look at the stats. Make your final guesses on if we can win or not. Let's do this. First is Ice Trainer Lorelei. She's easy though, just a usual Spore and Slash or Giga Drain combo. She didn't land a hit. Second is Fighting Trainer Bruno. Giga Drain one-shots Onyx, and Hitmonchan hangs on from Slash and hits us with Rock Tomb, bringing our speed down. He heals with a full restore, but a few slashes finish him off. I put Machamp to sleep since I know he'd hang on, and he ends up waking up fast and using Bulk Up to boost his attack and defense. I ended up critting for a one-shot though, so that was lucky. Hitman Lee's Mega Kick did a lot of damage. I just, I just really want to see fan art of Hitman Lee in Agent 47's suit now. Hitman Lee's Mega Kick did a lot of damage, but I took him out with a slash in one hit with no problem. Last is Onyx, so I use Giga Drain to easily finish him off. Between fights, I heal up with some potions. Also, I replace Leech Life with Thief since I'm going to be doing next to no damage to Agatha's poison ghost types. Also, I gave it PowerPoint up since I'm drowning in the things from my Meowths. Also an elixir because I need PowerPoints. Remember, I can use items outside of combat. Those are the rules at the start that everyone skips. Third is Ghost Trainer Agatha. Gengar is using double team right off the bat and I miss my first spore as a result, so not a fun start. I ended up putting her to sleep fast though, although she quickly woke up and used Confuse Ray. I took her out in two hits of Thief to finish her off. Second is Arbok, so our attack is down from Intimidate. I put her to sleep and slashed her down. A second Gengar comes out, but I acted fast and put her to sleep and hit Thief a few times. She hangs on with a berry and uses a full restore as she tries Hypnosis, but misses so I finish her with two more hits of Thief. Fourth is Golbat and although we're faster and put it to sleep, it instantly wakes up and nails a massive air cutter, two rounds in a row, nearly taking us out as we slash it down. That was terrifying. Last is Haunter, but Spore and Thief take it out fast. By the way, this fight took 15 attempts. I need some serious sleep and quick claw luck to win that one. Fourth is Dragon Trainer Lance. Gyarados is first, so we already have less attack. Slash and Spore are fantastic though, so even with his four restores, he never hit us. Second is Aerodactyl, so I put him to sleep, crit with Slash, and finish him with two more. We got lucky. He's fast and has strong flying moves, but Quick Claw activated and let us survive. Dragonite is next, and in spite of being the strongest non-legendary in the game, if he can't wake up, he can't fight us, so we win. Last star is two Dragonairs, but neither land a hit on us, as usual, thanks to us being faster, having Spore, and being strong enough to take them out fast. If this battle seemed lucky to you, it's because I failed this 12 times due to Aerodactyl, and this is just my luckiest attempt. Finally, the Pokemon Champion. Pidgeot opens with Aerial Ace, bringing us below half health as I put him to sleep and slash him down. Rough start. Rhydon is an easy one-shot with Giga Drain though, so at least I heal back to a decent amount. Charizard is out and we need Quick Claw to kick in. It doesn't, but Fire Blast misses, and we put him to sleep, and we get a critical slash for the one shot. Fire Blast only has a 15% chance of missing, and we lucked out on the critical hit on the slash. Alakazam puts up Reflect, but two slashes still take him out no problem. Executor gets hit with Spore, and I don't have Leech Life anymore, so I use Thief, but he wakes up fast and misses Egg Bomb. I put him back to sleep and Reflect wears off, so I just use Slash, but he wakes up again and uses Light Screen. Then Godfrey uses a four star on him, so he wakes up. I put him to sleep, Keep slashing, and then he wakes up and puts me to sleep with a sleep powder. Then he full restores again and misses another egg bomb. Eventually, we put him to sleep and slash him down some more, and he uses another full restore. After that, we critically slash him for a one shot. My god. Last is Gyarados, and it takes ages with him waking up and using Dragon Rage, but I'm very careful and use Giga Drain tons to stay healthy and eventually get a solid victory. This was attempt 22, by the way, because Charizard and Pidgeot can easily take us out. 
This was a really interesting run. I've always been a fan of Paris, so it was really fun finally getting to show off the power of Spore in a Pokemon challenge. I do wish that I had a speed nature though. You guys seem to absolutely love my Gen 2 baby challenge. So for next Saturday's Pokemon challenge, I'm going to try and do a baby only challenge in Pokemon Platinum. I'm in the process of moving right now though, so God, let's hope I can get this out on time. As always, I'm checking Twitter to see your suggestions. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. If you want to see more challenges like this, please let me know in the comments or on Twitter. I can always use more ideas from you guys on what I should do next. Also, check out the playlist in the description if you want to watch all the Pokemon challenges that I've already uploaded. If you guys want to see more Pokemon stuff from me, my friend Wadageek and I are doing a Gen 1 randomizer over on his channel, linked in the description. Also, come to my Twitch TV streams and tell me that this video sent you. It's always cool to hear how you found the channel. Thank you everybody so much for watching and until next time, have a nice day.